In case you're wondering why I sound so bad, it's because my number has finally come up and the plague has found me. Over the past couple of months, I have been trying to figure out a standard set of black and white films to shoot. And the reason I wanted a standard set of black and white films to shoot is I wanted to get really, really familiar with a particular family of film stocks or a particular film stock if there's only one. And this would enable me to shoot film more casually and also to get really familiar with the film so that when I do shoot it, I know exactly what I'm going to get in different lighting situations with different filters, polarizers, and all of that kind of stuff. And for me, the family of films I've decided to settle on as my, you know, standard films is, of course, the Ilford Delta line of films. Because I think the Ilford Delta films are fantastic and a really good choice for anybody who is looking for a you know, standard kind of casual black and white film to shoot. So why did I pick the Delta line of films? Well, honestly, I like the stock. I think the uh, Delta films have a really good look. They have lovely, fine, smooth grain when developed in certain developers. And that is something that I actually look for in my black and white images. I'm not really a huge fan of, you know, the ultra kind of, you know, grainy, hardcore film look, if that makes any sense. I much prefer the grain to sort of blend into the image itself and be part of the image, but not leaping out of the photo and smacking you across the side of the face. I do prefer it to sort of blend in nicely and that is something that the Delta films provide really, really well. And the reason the grain is so nice, for me anyway, on these films is because these are tabular grain films. Now, Ilford calls this their core shell technology. Um, Kodak, you might have heard, calls it T-grain films, which is their T-Max films, actually, in black and white. But all of those terms pale in comparison to the Fuji Sigma grain set. Another reason I like the Delta family of films is because they come in multiple speeds. Now, I know each speed of the film is actually slightly different in how it works and how it renders, but in general, they're basically the same film, you know, multiple speeds. The Ilford Delta comes in a 100 speed version, a 400 speed version, and a 3200 speed version. Now, that's with a caveat, it's actually not a 3200 speed film, it's actually a 1000 speed film that has been designed by Ilford to be pushed to 3200 in the developing process. Another reason I really like this family of films is because they come in such a good variety of formats. They come in 120 roll film. They also come in 135 or 35 millimeter canned film. And in the case of Delta 100 at least, it also comes in 4x5 size as well. And I believe it also comes in 8x10 and I think 5x7 sheets as well if you're insane and want to go into the really big formats. I'm pretty happy with 4x5 in the Intrepid. Also, 
the 400 speed and 100 speeds come in 35 millimeter bulk rolls as well if you really want to stock up and shoot a lot of black and white film a bulk roll is a good way to get there and save yourself a few pennies if you get a bulk loader now you might ask yourself why wouldn't i choose kodak's t-max family of films because they're pretty much the same well there's a couple of reasons for that one there's no T-Max 3200, as far as I'm aware, in 120 format. Also, I don't think there is bulk rolls available of T-Max. Now, I might be wrong on that. I haven't actually looked into it, but I know Ilford has bulk rolls because, well, it's here on the table next to me. But I'm not sure about T-Max. Maybe there is. But the main reason, honestly, is that the Delta line of films are simply just cheaper per roll to buy than the Kodak T-Max black and white film. So that's pretty much why I chose it. It gives me the results I want for less money. Now it's all well and good having, you know, a standard family of films that you're super familiar with and are able to shoot in all kinds of situations and just get to know really well. But that's only half the battle because if you want to have a standard set of films, well, you're gonna need a standard developer that you're able to develop it in consistently. Now, if you're getting it developed at a lab, that's kind of out of your control. It's whatever the lab uses to develop it. But as for me, who home develops all of his film, and it's pretty obvious given the fact that there's developing tanks in the background of the shot, I had to figure out what developer I wanted to use for my black and white developing. And that is... Extal. And in my opinion, it is the best black and white developer on the market. For the Delta films, at least. Um, any tests I've done in other films, it's performed fantastically. But for the Delta films, I do think that Kodak's Extal developer is pretty much absolute top tier. It is also the cheapest per roll black and white developer I can find. That's you know not road not stand development, but is a you know normal black and white development process. But Extal also has the very useful property that when you develop Delta 100, 400 and 3200 in it at stock, which is the measurement you use when you're doing replenishment, all the films have the same development time of seven and a half minutes. This allows you to run much larger batch processes of black and white. So you can develop all the black and white films at box speed together in the same tank. And this saves a lot of hassle if you're shooting a lot of film and it just makes things so much easier to deal with. To finish up this video, I do have to say that I think the Delta films get an unfair bad rap online. I actually think they're really, really good films, but I know a lot of people out there choose HP5 and Tri-X and FP4, which are all excellent films as well. However, I just, I don't know, for some reason, I really like the Delta films over those. I prefer the look it gives me. And, and at the end of the day, if the film gives you the look you want, that's all that matters. But if you haven't tried the Delta films, give them a try. They do require a little bit more accurate exposure compared to something like HP5 or FP4. They are, they are a little less forgiving. And also if you're home developing the Delta films, you really do have to wash the film properly after developing. If you don't, you can sometimes get this weird kind of purpley pink kind of tinge to the base of the film. And if anyone's wondering what that pink tinge is, it's actually the anti halation layer that hasn't been washed off properly. On the Delta films, it is a super stubborn layer, so you do need to wash it really, really well. But I do think that there is a lot of film shooters out there who would really like the look of the Delta films in Extal or a suitable developer for T grain films, because T-grain films can actually look kind of ugly in certain developers. It is something you do need to pay attention to. But I do feel like there's a lot of people out there who would really like this look for their black and white. But the films just don't get enough exposure on social media in general. So if you're out there, grab some rolls of Delta 400, you know, pick yourself up a bag of x taller. If you want a smaller amount than 5 litres, get some uh, X-T3 from Adox. I believe it's the same stuff and shoot and develop some Delta. You might be pleasantly surprised. Anyway, that's it for this video. See you in the next one.